morning, everybody. Welcome to Worship at Faith this morning. So glad that you've chosen to uh, take this time to uh, join us in worshiping our Lord this morning. Um, I don't know where you are, but I know here in Colorado, it is a beautiful sunny day. And so pray that um, God's warmth and rays will shine into your life this morning, wherever you find yourself. And um, we will be having communion as a part of our worship this morning. And so invite you to uh, make sure you have some bread and wine or grape juice um, handy. And please know that all are welcome to participate in the Lord's table this morning. Doesn't matter what your church background is or you don't have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus, if you desire his love in your life, then we invite you um, to be a part of the meal today. So as we uh, begin our time together here this morning, uh, I want to welcome you if you are newer to our uh, worshiping community this morning um, and would love to know that you are with us. You can uh, let us know by emailing me at jane at faithgolden.org or through our website, which is www.faithgolden.org. So um, would love to know that you are um, with us and that I have a chance to meet you. A few other announcements as we begin this morning. Um, the, for those of uh, you who have been around us for a while, you know that, um, that we have sent out the links for worship via uh, Teams, through our website, through email, and through text. And um, we are no longer going to send them via text. So uh, please look at your email, please look, um, you can always go to the website, um, or uh, if you're not connected to uh, us on Teams yet, we would love, love, love to get you connected that way. So um, those will be the places where you can find the link for worship. And, um, and so if you have any trouble or anything, please, please let us know. Um, and now I want to send it over to uh, Linda Jewelry this morning. Uh, she has some information about the Women's Gathering coming up. Good morning. My announcement this morning is to invite all, and I repeat all women, on a special day for our Faith Women's Day of Connection. The date is Saturday, March 6th, not that far away. The time is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the theme is loving God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I again repeat, all women are welcome. It doesn't matter if you didn't attend the session we had last fall. And please feel free to invite family and friends near and far. You have your choice to meet in host homes, of course, abiding the COVID-19 protocols or online with Zoom. The cost is $15. Registration is through the Faith Golden website and can be found on the home page and there's information on the screen. Please, please sign up today. We all need this connection. So it will be a day that you will not forget. Thank you. And over to Kristen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kristen Johnston and I'm the director for South Table Mountain Preschool, which is Faith's preschool. Um, I just wanted hey, to Kristen, come on this morning. Can I morning. pause you for a second? We don't yeah. have your video. Can you check and see if that's turned on for us? It is. <laughs> that's hey, no the camera is on. We'll, no, no worries. Just go ahead and we'll, we'll give you full screen on the slide and just go ahead with the announcement. All right. Thanks, Jim. Um, so I wanted to let everyone know that registration and enrollment um, for the fall 21-22 school year is uh, happening now. Um, it is open for current families and new families. Um, current families, you guys should have all of the instructions on how to get uh, registered and enrolled. It is a two-step process. Um, for all new families, uh, you can contact me um, at either um, email or phone. Uh, the email is stmp at faithgolden.org or our phone number 720-308-3172, just like you see on your screen. Um, you can call or email and we'll set up a virtual tour. Um, we can do tours via FaceTime or Zoom. And you can find out more information about the preschool on our website, goldenpreschool.org as well. 
And um, then after your virtual tour, if you feel like South Table Mountain is a good fit for your family, then we can go through the process of getting your kiddo registered and enrolled for the next school year. Thanks so much. Back over to Jane. Thanks, Kristen. And I uh, want to encourage you to yet for both of those events, the women's uh, for the women's gathering and for um, school at STMP, uh, encourage you to go get signed up for those quickly. And uh, so with STMP, so you have your spot and with the women's gathering so that um, you get your goodie bag in time. So uh, that's a part of that $15 cost. Uh, well, it quickly the season of Lent is going to be upon us here. And um, Ash Wednesday is Wednesday, February 17th. And um, and so uh, we want to kick the fall or fall, the Lent season off together. Um, there will be ashes. Um, a part of the traditions of Ash Wednesday are that we mark our foreheads with, um, with ashes as a reminder um, as we say, from dust we are and to dust we shall return, which is uh, a reminder of how much we need God's presence and breath and love in our lives. And so if you would like to have uh, ash, the ash cross on your forehead, we will be in the lower lot, the very lowest lot at Faith, um, on Wednesday, February 17th from 6.30 a.m. So you can stop on your way to school, you can stop on your way to work, um, 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And then we'll be out again from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then we will have a time of worship together that evening at 6.30 p.m. online. And we'll be sending out the link for that here. So um, please uh, plan to join us as we begin this Lenten journey around the theme, We Make the Way by Walking. Again, that's Wednesday, seven, the February 17th, and I hope that you will join us. And then today is um, that high holy holiday of Super Bowl. And um, one of the tr longstanding traditions of the faith youth is an outreach event on Super Bowl Sunday. And um, they can't quite do it the way that they normally do, um, but they have found some creative ways to still get socks and needed things into the hands of our homeless friends. And so to tell you more about how you can be a part of that, um, there is a video that the kids made, and so I just turn your attention to the screen. Hi, Faith Congregation. My name is Kaylee Mars, and this is Youth Group. Hi. Hi. Um, this weekend, we're going to be hosting a sock and t-shirt drive for the homeless population. We're going to have a uh, what donation station this Saturday from 10 to 12 and Sunday from 12 to 3. And we're looking for new socks or new or used t-shirts. See you then. Hit it. <laughs> Oh, how I love their creativity. Um, so that was, uh, the, it, it actually was yesterday. You could drop off socks or today from 12 to 3. And um, they will anxiously be awaiting uh, you at, uh, in the upper lot down by the Fellowship Hall. You can drop those socks and the t-shirts they're going to use to make um, reusable bags. And so, uh, Feel free to drop those off as well. Um, support our kids and support their uh, work in being missional as well. Well, that's it for announcements this morning. And so let's just take a moment uh, to uh, draw our hearts and our minds, um, our focus onto the God that we gather here to celebrate this morning. As we gather to worship God today, we come confessing where we have fallen short, 
where our lives have not lived up to God's call, where we have slipped in our love of God. So gracious God, hear the confessions of your children as we come to you in love. Will you please join me in, in the words on the screen? We confess that we have turned away from you and let ourselves be distracted by the things of this world. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have let the power of sin break our relationship with you. But we come humbly repenting, asking for your forgiveness, for the things known to us and unknown, the things we have done and left undone. Turn our hearts towards you, that we might love you with all our heart, all our soul, mind, and strength. Dear friends, God, in his infinite love and mercy, hears our confessions and forgives our sins. By the grace of God, we are made new and God calls us children. May God's love for you strengthen you with power and compel you to love and to let yourself be loved. In the name and the power of Father, God, Creator, Redeemer, and spirit. Amen. Well, as we come confessing and as we come knowing that we are truly forgiven and that we are loved beyond all reason, uh, we also come knowing that we have a gift to share. Actually, we have many gifts to share with the world around us, but one of those is the gift of God's peace. And so this morning, I invite you to share that peace with those who you are worshiping with this morning, um, but also invite you, as always, to pick up your phone and um, to share God's peace with those uh, who might be a little bit further away from you today. And so I say to you, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you please share God's peace with one another? newer hymns in our hymnal is a song entitled, Lord Jesus, You Shall Be My Song. And, uh, and so I invite you to join me in singing this song uh, this morning as we continue our worship.
Hey, good morning, everybody. Let's continue to celebrate. First reading today is from the first Peter chapter four, verses seven through 11. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever, whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God must may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever, amen. And the second reading is from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. 
Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Here ends the readings. A basin and a towel. Who would ever have thought that even simple etiquette rules could be used by God to draw a picture of what it means to love him? But that is exactly what just happened here in this story. Jesus and his disciples have gathered in the upper room for their last meal together. Even though the disciples don't recognize this, Jesus does. This is a meal they know well. Just like I, if I asked you, what, what do you have? What do we eat at Thanksgiving? You would tell me turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie. Even if you don't personally have all that, um, we all know what's supposed to be the haves at Thanksgiving, don't we? Well, Jesus and his disciples have gathered for this meal, which is just as well known as Thanksgiving is for us. This is a meal that they gather together every year and still do to remember what God had done when he freed the people from um, slavery in Egypt. When, when Pharaoh wasn't overly thrilled with the fact that his entire workforce he wanted to leave town, um, God sent a series of plagues, flies and gnats and hail and fire and water and um, water to blood and boils and locusts and frogs and darkness, all of that. And nothing really convinced Pharaoh to let over a million slaves go free until until the last plague that God sent where the firstborn of every household died. And he told the children of Israel, if you take a lamb and slaughter it and paint your door doorposts with the blood of that lamb, then the angel of death will pass over. It was an amazing feast. And, and so the Jews, like I said, even to this day, celebrate Passover to commemorate and remember this amazing act of love on God's part. This is the meal Jesus and his disciples are coming to. Jesus has been teaching and healing and laughing and praying and casting out demons and forgiving sins for, for three years now. He's famous in the area and beyond. Everyone knows who Jesus is. 
so one would think people um, would be looking out for him, making sure that uh, he's safe, caring for him. And, and wouldn't that extend to basic hospitality? But before we're too hard on the disciples, we need to remember that everyone that day was a guest in this upper room. This was not any one of the disciples' homes. It was a rented room. So it's kind of easy to understand if everyone thought someone else was in charge of washing feet. Even when they say, um, when they sat down at the table, they knew their, they all knew their feet hadn't been washed. And, and this is a big deal in those days. We go, what's the big deal about having to wash your feet before you eat? But they sat at low tables, and so people's feet were near others' faces and near the food. And, and just think, you'd be, you're wearing sandals all the time, and it's hot, and it's dusty, and it's dirty. And so a very, very necessary part of hospitality was washing people's feet when they entered a home. And so everyone would have known that this act of hospitality hadn't been done. Even when Jesus steps up to get, um, to get ready to do the washing of feet, no one stops him. Some of the disciples even let Jesus wash their feet. It isn't until Jesus reaches Peter that someone puts up a fuss. But this isn't... This story isn't about how the disciples neglected their duty. It's not even about missed opportunities by the disciples to serve. This story is about how we treat those we love. And it is about how we treat the God we love. How many of you ever think about how you're treating God? How many of you have ever, ever think about how you're treating God when, when you refuse someone's help? When you say you don't want to be a burden or a bother, when, when you deny someone else the opportunity to serve you, when we want to be served more than we want to serve others, have you ever thought about the fact that we show our love to God through our acts of service? towards God and towards others? Remember, we've been talking over the last number of weeks about how do we love God? And we've looked at that ways to love God are getting to know God through the scriptures and the stories, spending quality time with God in worship, in praise, and in presence together, having conversations with God through prayer, not, not just the prayers that are the laundry list of things we want God to do, but but uh, conversation back and forth, speaking and listening. Talked about using words of affirmation in worship and in praise, and honoring God through how we use God's name. All of these are ways to love God. Today we add one more act of service. Throughout God's story in scripture, it is pretty clear one of God's love languages one of the ways we can love God is through serving God and serving others. Now, we often think of serving others. And here in the community, this community of faith, we think about it a lot, about feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and, and shelter for the homeless, socks for the homeless, right? Or, or we think about it in ways of bringing a meal to someone or, or driving someone somewhere or maybe cleaning their home for them, being there for them. And yes, all of these are acts of service. But what if loving God through acts of service also include things like paying attention to those closest to us, doing, doing something that will lighten their load? I was talking with some friends this past week, and some of, we agreed that some of the best acts of service are when, when someone we know takes something off our plates. When someone sees me and knows that I am struggling or that I am overwhelmed or um, my laundry list is way too long to get done. Um, and when somebody comes and says, why don't I just take care of this for you? Wow, is that a powerful act of service? Or, or another example, 
when when one parent takes over the care of the, your children so the other parent can take a break. I, I talk to many of you who have littles, and I know that you do this for each other. Acts of service to those we love. Don't ever doubt that God feels love when we serve each other. Jesus knew that this was so important that in Matthew 5, he says, let your light, your inner light, your life so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven, right? Our serving should always reflect the love of the Father has already given us. And when it does, in such, uh, when we reflect that light, then in such ways that people can see God and see God's love for not only for us, but for themselves, it is a powerful act of love. So while we may not have thought about acts of service in exactly those ways before, it still is pretty familiar, ter familiar territory. Acts of service seems pretty straightforward, even if we need to be a little more creative sometimes or, or paying deeper attention. But what if, what if loving God through serving God also actually means obedience? Now, let's be honest. We don't really like to think of obedience, except when we want someone to obey us, right? We want others to obey, but we want to be free to do whatever we want. I think this is probably more true than we like to admit. But loving God through acts of service, as, as much as it is about serving others, it is also about doing what God asks us to do. And what does God ask us to do? To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. Not to think of ourselves as better than others, not, and not to just bring an offering, but, but to bring our lives. I mean, I could keep going on and on, but what, what is true for a lot of us is like we pretty much already know what it means to obey God. We simply want to do it in our own fashion and our own way. We don't want to have to do anything we don't feel like doing. But think about this. Parents, when your children do what you want them to do, life is so much better, isn't it? Kids, when you do what your parents want you to do, even if you don't agree or don't like it, pretty sure life is easier and better at home for you. My friends, the same is true for God. Acts of service. Serving God includes obedience. Now, this isn't easy. Because what I see happen often is, is this. Our, our relationship with God becomes this checklist of things to get done, right? Or our relationship with God is based on, on just showing up at church, whatever that means. Or our relationship with God is, I come to God and ask God to do the things that I want. And then I get to live my life the way I want to live. And then in the midst of all of that somewhere, I hope I'm good enough for God. Or we just kind of happen to uh, kind of ignore the whole thing and, and show up just where we need to. Now, that might feel like a bit of a stretch. Not everyone is like that, and I know that. But I also know that many of you who long for deep, meaningful relationship with God live in a ways that allow that to happen. Yes, absolutely. But I also know that there is more to this journey, this side of heaven. And there's always room to ask, am I living acts of service to God by obeying God's command? Not as a means of buying God's love, right? Because we can't do that. But in response to God's love for me, for you, for us. Our heart set in the midst of this is so very important. So think about loving God through service like this. Think of some places where you've received bad service. 
Maybe it was a restaurant or a store or online somewhere. But people there have titles like server or waiter, or waitress, customer service, cashier, janitor, cleanup crews, returns, et cetera, et cetera, right? We think about that bad experience. In what ways did those who were serving you tell you they weren't really that interested in you? Right? Maybe as the wait staff brought the wrong food or 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 um, or forgot a part of your order. Maybe they were rude or snotty to you. Maybe they were more interested in talking with friends than doing their job. Maybe maybe they seemed annoyed that they had to do something for you. We've all had those bad experiences, right? Now, now think of some place like, like Disney. There is a reason it's known as the most magical place on earth because it goes over the top on customer service. It's not just about getting people in the door. It's an attitude of culture throughout the entire experience of Disney. And that culture lives to serve. So what if we were like Disney staff in our attitude towards loving God, wanting to serve at our very best? Again, not to earn our place, but simply to show our love. Have you ever thought about how you think about God and your money can be an act of service? Have you ever thought about how you use who God has created you to be, your, your time, your talents, your gifts, as acts of service to further the mission of the kingdom now? In the text from Peter that Linda read for us, Peter reminds us we have gifts and we are to use them. If our gift is speaking, speak as if it is the very words of God that you are speaking. If it is helping, help with all the strength and energy that God provides. I mean, we get the idea. Our heart and mindset has a lot to do with either acts of service or just getting things done. When we love someone, we want to serve them. When we love God, the same should be true out of response to the love already given us. So what if this week we try loving God through acts of service, acts of obedience? Remember, your place with Jesus is already taken care of. This is not about earning your spot in heaven. This is about responding out of the depth of love that has already been given to us. What if we were ready? What if we chose to pick up our basin and towel this week and faithfully did acts of service to God? Think about it. Maybe even do more than think about it. Let's see how faithfully we can serve God this week. Will you please pray with me? God, sometimes it feels like we try to make loving you so incredibly difficult. And really, we can love you just like you love us. We can, we can love you in the ways that we love other people. Lord, just as our conversations with you need to not simply just be, I want, I want, I want, I want. Our lives should also be lived, not out of that place of just, I want, I want, I want, I want. But Lord, how can I pick up my basin and towel? How can I serve you this week? Lord, help us be creative. Help us be purposeful. Open our eyes and our hearts to the way to love you more deeply this week. Pray this in your name and in your power, Jesus. Amen. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and a soul on the earth. How beautiful the feet that walk 
long dusty road to the cross. How Is the body of Christ? How beautiful the heart that bled, that took all my sin and bore it instead. How beautiful the tender eyes that chose to forgive and never despised, how beautiful, how beautiful, how beautiful is the body of Christ, and as he lay How beautiful indeed is the body of Christ, the, the bread and the wine in this meal that we come to now, but also how beautiful is the body of Christ that is each and every single one of us, created to love God and to serve God, created to be a part of this family and this place and this mission to love. To love God, to love ourselves, to love each other. And so I invite you to come to this table today, not, not out of shame for what you have not done, not out of guilt for maybe what you have done, but uh, I invite you to come to this table simply as an act of faith, an act of grace, an act of welcoming the love that is given for you. And so I invite you to pick up the bread um, that you are using this morning and whoever is being the, the host for communion in your home this morning, um, to pick up these elements and to hold them and then say these words with me. So put your bread, take your bread in your hands and say with me, on the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, 
he took a piece of bread, gave thanks for it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then I invite you to pick up your glass of grape juice or wine and say with me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we prepare to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer that he has taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites us to this meal just as he prepares this meal for us. And so I invite you then to come to commune with one another, whether that is physically in the same space or communing with all of us in the communion of saints. Come, my friends, eat, drink, and be fed. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, we give you thanks this morning for the reminder of how great your love is for us. And we thank you also for the reminder of the call that you have placed on our lives, that our lives might be lives of service to you and for others. Lord, open our eyes and our hearts to those possibilities this week. And let us step out with courage and in faith to serve you with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. 
Lord, we pray this day for the brokenness in our world. Brokenness that we see every single day. The brokenness of disease and pain. The brokenness of violence and death. The brokenness of relationships gone wrong. The brokenness of our our own thoughts that lead us to believe that we are not worthy of love, not worthy of your love. We pray for people today who are struggling with in the midst of that brokenness. Pray for those who are struggling with loneliness this week, Lord, and I pray that you would have us be those people who reach out, who think of others, who bring a meal or share a kind word that loneliness might be dispelled we think of those this morning lord who are battling physical or mental illness we pray for your healing hand and touch we pray for those for whom life seems very uncertain these days those without jobs or those who are on the brink of losing jobs, those who have no idea what the future holds. Be a strong and powerful presence with them. And Lord, I pray that you would remind us today that you promise us today, not tomorrow or next week or two years from now, but that you promise us your presence and your gift, your blessing for today. And so Lord, let us teach us to be content, to be content and to give thanks for all that we have this day in you. And then Lord, if we get to wake up tomorrow, let us be thankful for that day. Lord, there is so much in our world that we need to pray for. And we bring those things that are near and dear to our hearts. We bring the people who are near and dear to our hearts. uh, To you in silent prayer now. Continue to call us, Lord. Continue to gather us, continue to empower and send us. We pray all this in your name and in your power, Jesus. Amen. Well, now as we go from this time of worship together, may the peace of God reign in your heart and the love of God forever hold you tight. May the spirit of God flow through your life and the joy of God uphold you this day and night. Amen. Hey, and team, before we go to our last song, we are actually going to retry playing the youth video today. I think folks have noticed there have been a couple of times the trusty Internet has failed us a little bit in terms of some of our video and some of our audio today. So we're going to try again. So the hard work that the youth put into this video is hopefully something that you all can see. So Devin, I'm going to have you roll that one more time. Hi, Faith Congregation. My name is Kaylee Mars, and this is Youth Group. Hi. Um, this weekend, we're going to be hosting a sock and t-shirt drive for the homeless population. Hi. Well, unfortunately, it looks like it's still frozen for us. So let's do this. Uh, we'll cue that up for next week. Um, and so that even though it's past the past the time, I do want the youth to get a chance to have their stuff be seen. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm really sorry that that is not uh, not working for us this morning. For those who are able to hang on a little bit longer, I invite you to join this last song with us. I'm 
head a bit higher Lift my voice a bit louder